Hello, I'm here to show you a tool called Edge. It's been in production for quite a few years, I think about seven years now. Um, it's been used by many people. It's the first time that I'm going to release it on Nukipedia and my site. So I thought I'd do a little video and show you why it's so important to use an Edge extension tool. It has gone through quite a few names, but now I've just sort of stripped it down to Edge. It's been called Edge Grow, Edge Extend. There's many other tools like it that use um, iDilates and ST maps and, and different ways of doing this. This version of an Edge tool basically uses a uh, premalt blur on premalt method that kind of bleeds each pixel out and maintains that color throughout the bleed. This is a short film that I'm going to show you a shot from uh, called Alpha by Aaron Carruth. And I'm going to play this and show you the plate, take you through the comp a little bit, and then uh, take you through edge. So this shot was a good example because the door opening has this motion blurred edge. And this was shot on a green screen. So as soon as we suppress the green, it's going to become a gray light edge that you've seen probably before in your comp. So here it is over green, and he's got some nice light hair detail, so our key had to be fairly good. Okay, so I'm going to park it on a frame here once the door is open. Something like this, and take you through the comp. So from back to front, the background was just a hallway image that we found um, and modified it enough so we could use it. Uh, a series of ramps funneled into a Z to focus node to fake a Z depth. Some grading. Uh, the flares were created in Video Copilot. to our background. So here is our inventor. Spill suppression was done using a key light despill. Uh, a series of edge tools or edge nodes. They used to be called Edge Plus, now it's just called Edge. Um, this reason is because on the left you've got uh, an edge that is far more defocused than anything on our gentleman here, our inventor. So edge tool is not to be used as a one-all solution. Just apply it to your key and you're good to go. What you want to do is isolate it to the areas that it's needed. Because as soon as you see what these are doing, bleeding these edges out, it's actually possible that it could grab color from other areas and contaminate its surrounding area, basically. So you want to be careful with how intense you do these. I'm sure that these stronger ones were meant for the doorway and the lighter ones are meant for the inventor. I step through, you can see here we've eroded all the detail out so I'm bringing it back by not using an edge tool for that section. Some grades in a pre-malt. Over our background. Flares are going behind him. So we're going to bring those slightly in front, not by too much. Advanced grain. And down here, final grade. So looking at the final grade, what I'm going to do is come up here to where all of our keying and edge work was done. I'll put down a copy. I'm going to copy the alpha channel here. It's quite a nice alpha channel. It's not a bad key. And I'm going to use my foreground with my spill. Maybe I'll just use a switch here to show you the difference. So edge work, just copy and pre-malting. Now we could get in here, clean up uh, our remaining key artifacts, deal with the edge by applying maybe um, an edge blur and darkening that down. There's quite a few things that we could do, but they're not really the right thing to do. 
we could erode our alpha channel to get rid of that. But the first thing that your supervisor is going to look at here is they're going to flip back and forth between the plate and see that you've eroded your edges. That's a very big no-no. You want to maintain as much of the image as you can. So that brings us into an edge workflow. So just off to the edge, I'm going to, let's deal with this hat here. Put down an edge node. And the first thing you're going to see is all the inputs. This may be a little different than any edge erode or edge extend that you're used to. The reason for this is finer control. This edge tool has more control, I find, than most others out there. And it's the reason why it's my go-to. So what you have is your foreground. So we're going to pump that into our foreground with spill suppression. You've got your background. That would be pumped into your background. Not necessary. I'll tell you why in a moment. And then you have your core and final key. Now your final key is, is your final key. It has all of your fine hair detail, your motion blurred edges, everything in it. It's what's going to be used at the end. Like uh, we're not going to alter your key in this tool. The core is used to help define where that motion blur or soft semi-transparent edge begins and ends. Now you can pump the same, the core and the final key into the same node. But the other reason for it is if you had Roto, let's say that we were getting Roto from a company and they've separated out or were nice enough to separate out um, Roto without motion blur and Roto with motion blur. So you would add in your Roto with no motion blur into this one and with motion blur into this one. For now, I'm going to put both into my key here. Now the first mode that this is going to be in is going to be intermediate mode. It's just like the intermediate mode inside of uh, key light where it's just an unpremultiplied result. And it's a much easier way to define where our edge tool needs to work. The BG input is basically the difference between final and intermediate. Inside the tool, it's just a switch that has a merge with a premult over the background. So looking at intermediate mode, I can see here, that's where my edge was. And just with one, I've gotten rid of that. But we have this really, really harsh fall off from where we're bleeding out this color. We'll get to that in a second. This size here, edge growth size, is how far out we need to bleed this. You've got to be careful with this because once we go into pre-malt, if this edge size does not reach to the edge of your image, you're going to notice it right away. It's going to break up that image. It kind of looks like the um, IBK color node. You know, if that, if that stuff isn't bled out enough, you're going to see it cut into your image. So let's make sure that we have enough room. And then we can start looking at blending this edge. So we have uh, a knob here called Edge Blend. And that's going to help us soften that transition. But you see we're bringing that white color back in. So it just means we need to come in a little bit more. You want to keep these values as low as possible. So something like that might be ideal. Edge blur is something that's a little bit more broad. It would work if you had a sunlit side and by bleeding the edge out, you've gotten rid of that brightness. So you could use this edge blur to start introducing some of that color back in again. So it's just a, a different type of uh, edge transition. And then we get down to edge smooth. Edge smooth is last resort, hardly ever use it. But if you had something that was moving very quickly across frame, had a very large amount of motion blur fall off, you would use this edge smooth to basically obliterate and get rid of detail. But it really does soften that edge up. Again, last resort. And then I skipped over this, but when you create an edge node, there's a channel that's automatically created called edge. And what that is, if we preview it, I'll have 
have to check into that one. This will be fixed by the time it's published. But basically, it is a shuffle where you can shuffle um, your edge channel out. And that is going to be the edges that you've made. So once you've used this edge extend to smear the edge out, there's no more grain in those edges. So what you need to do is use this and then your preferred grain method, mask it, and then you can regrain these edges. And that will update as you change your values inside of your edge tool. So that's it for the controls. There is a little advanced feature I've put in here called the color section. Um, for that, I'm going to come over here where I've got a checkerboard, some roto, and color bars to show that. So my foreground is going to be my checkerboard. My core and final key will be here. I could make my core this and the blur edge my final key. And then the background is going to be these color bars. So by default, this is turned off. You can see my edge work here. I'm in intermediate mode, so if I went to final, you can see it merged over the color bars. If I come in here and enable, you can see this color bleeding through now. And there's a preview. This is what the other preview will look like. It'll just be a red overlay. So this is the same thing. It's bringing in the edge that I've created. I can expand this edge in any direction that I want. I can soften it, so soften the internal fall off, and blur the input. So I'm going to take the preview off. You can see that we can notice the color bars that I'm bleeding in here. So I can blur that. Gain it, gamma, lift, saturation has all these values in here, and then there's a mix. What this is useful for, again, is if you had uh, an extreme amount of color on your background, and you wanted to bleed that through semi-transparent edges. That's what this color section's for. So that's Edge. I hope that you find it useful. Um, please leave me comments, uh, questions, concerns, anything that I can do to make this node better. Um, I guess as a last thing, I'll take you through and show you the internals of the node. Um, here's where your core comes in and all of the edge work that we do. So all these controls here, the edge size, blend, blur, is all controlled here. The actual bleeding is done here. This is the uh, pre-melt, blur, on pre -melt method. That gets pumped in and here's your foreground. So the edges that we've done here, all the edge work, is used as a mask to define where the foreground, where we don't want anything done, and the bleeding edge is performed. So that's all done here. Then we have the final key. That gets copied here so that we don't alter the key in the final state of the, the comp. And we're using some intersection modes here to create the edge mat between the core and the, ble the bleeding edge and the internal and final key. Then we have the background that's being brought in and that's how all that color work is being done. There's our switch between intermediate with no pre-multiplication and then final output. So as a final reminder, I use these um, in sections that I'm needing them. Do not use this over your whole key because you'll find that as someone gets close to another person or the wall or anything like that, it'll start bleeding that color that is coming close to that, that other object. So isolate where you need this stuff with roto shapes, key mixes, and use this sparingly. Thank you. This is Rob Bannister. I hope you enjoy Edge. Uh, again, give me any, any comments, feedback, questions, concerns, anything you want to see added into this node, and uh, hopefully it continues to grow, and you guys think it's as awesome as I do.
Thank you. Bye.